Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Blake Bauer and I'm super excited to be taking you through how to go ahead and create your first Facebook ad. Now this video is gonna be great if you're a complete beginner and have never created a Facebook ad in your entire life or if you're more intermediate and just want an introduction to the Facebook ad account and how to actually go ahead and create a campaign, ad set and ad and the best practices when doing all of that. So this video is going to be a over the shoulder, step-by-step -step walkthrough of me actually going ahead and creating my meta business accounts, uh, navigating over the meta business suites, how to add your Facebook ad accounts, your pixel, and how to actually navigate into your ads account and then go ahead and create your first campaign ad set and ad. And there's quite a lot of steps there, but um, I promise it's not overly complicated um, for you to actually go ahead and launch your ad to your audience and get the best possible results with Facebook ads. Now, just to quickly mention, I am the founder and CEO of a digital advertising agency called Jetstream Digital, and we help brands grow and scale with paid ads on Facebook, Google, and more. So if you wanna learn more about that and apply to work with me and my team, you can find the links to that in the description below, and we're happy to see if we're a good fit to work together. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into my computer and let me take you through this step-by-step -step tutorial. All right, so now that we're in my computer here, the first thing that you wanna do is come to this page by typing in your browser, business.facebook.com slash overview. Now, once you type that in, you're gonna be brought to a page that looks like this. And if you haven't already set up your meta business suite or your business manager, this is where you're gonna be prompted to do so. And you're gonna to wanna to create a separate business manager or business suite for each of your separate businesses. So let's say you have you know, multiple pages, multiple different kind of businesses that you might wanna run ads for in the future. You're gonna to wanna to create a business manager for each of those just to have them separated, have their own separate ad accounts um, and everything like that so that you can properly you know, add employees to each of those businesses potentially um, and just kind of keep everything separate. So once you're here, go ahead and click on create an account. And then what you're gonna be prompted to do is enter in your business and account name. So this should match the public name of your business since it's visible across Facebook. So just again, your business name, enter your name and then your business email as well. So I'm just gonna enter in some information here, right? And then hit submit. Now, once you've hit submit, it's gonna say this. Um, in, in my case, I just created a business manager called AdScale. So already you can confirm your email address. Awesome, so once you've gone ahead and created your business suite, you'll be brought to a page that looks like this. And as you can see, it has the name of our business here, AdScale Business Accounts. Um, we do have multiple other ones. So in this case, um, there's actually a drop down here. And then you can see I have access to a lot of different uh, other business accounts, right? Um, but in your case, right, you should only have the one or if you have a couple uh, that you have access to, then you'll have a few more than that. Now from here, what you can do is you can see you have your people. So this is where you can actually add employees to your business manager, right? So you can go ahead and go add people and then you can add in their business email and give them admin access or employee access, right? And then you can actually give them access to the financials you know, as a financial editor, you can click next and that will invite them to then join this meta business manager where then they can have access to everything and it just provides a lot more organization in the back end. Now, another thing that you can do is come up to business account info. And this is where you can actually go ahead and see your business account ID here. And then you can actually go ahead and add your business assets. You can invite people and you can also create an ad account. So from here, what you're gonna, gonna go ahead and do is you can just click edit here. You can change the name of your business account and you can also add a logo if you wanna add a logo here. Now you can also add your business assets here. So this is the next step that we're gonna do. And this is super important when it comes to adding in your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your Facebook pixel, your Facebook ad account, if you already have these things. So you're gonna actually make sure that you go ahead and connect those as this is a super important step in order to be able to actually run Facebook ads. So once you're in the business assets section, you're going to want to go ahead and click on add assets here, or you can also click right here to go ahead and add assets. And the first things that you're going to want to add are your Facebook page. First of all, your Instagram account. You all can also connect your WhatsApp account. You can collect, you can connect your advertising ad account. If you already have one of those, you can connect your custom conversions, your pixel, your data sets. Uh, you can also connect your catalog and you can connect your app or business creative folder if you have those as well. So you're obviously gonna to wanna to go ahead and connect your Facebook page. You're gonna to wanna to connect your Instagram account, first of all. So let's go ahead and start with the Facebook page here. What you can do, if you don't already have a Facebook page from this section, you can actually create a new Facebook page for your business, right? So in this case, for this test account, right, if we wanted to go ahead and create that, we can go ahead and select this. We can actually enter the name here, right? Like ad scale, category, right? Let's go like marketing agency. And then we could add a bio there. We go next, right? Boom. And then you can see it's connecting this business account to this Facebook page. And then we can actually just create that Facebook page, right? So that's an option for you. If you already have a Facebook page, again, you're going to want to go ahead and claim an existing Facebook page. 
And then essentially how you can do that is you just search for it, right? So if we wanted to go ahead and add in Jetstream Digital, we can go ahead and add that in, right? So we can actually log in and connect to that uh, actual Facebook page, in this case for Jetstream Digital. And then we could actually go ahead and add this into this business manager by claiming that we own it by logging in. The third option is actually request uh, to share a Facebook page. So you don't move the page, access is shared with a business, man, uh, business account instead. Best for agencies who need to access to their clients' pages. So we use this when we wanna work with uh, different client account Facebook pages and add them into our own business manager account. So in most cases, you're not really gonna have to worry about this, but if you do have an agency or something like that, where you're wanting to help other people with services related to the Facebook business suite, um, you can actually do that here. So um, that is how to add Facebook. Next thing you wanna do is the same thing for the Instagram account. Again, go ahead and click on, I agree, claim Instagram account. You're gonna to wanna to log into your Instagram account there. You can also add your WhatsApp account if you have that. And you can also add in your ad accounts, right? If you know that you already have that. Or again, you can create a new ad account as well, which is what we're going to do. And you can do a few other steps there as well. So popping into our actual meta business suite for Jetstream Digital, you can see this is what it looks like on the actual homepage. Now to get back to where we were, you essentially wanna go over to settings here and that will bring you to where we just were again. You can add in different teammates here. You can go ahead and actually go to the business settings right, which is the old school dashboard that looks like this, which is very, very useful where you can see some other stuff as well. I prefer to navigate from this uh, business settings dashboard, but that's where you can find that. Um, you can also see your ad account settings, your billing and payments, your language here, again, your business assets, which we do have quite a bit of assets here. So you can see all of these assets here, right, in the actual business suite. And then you can also see your business account info as well. Now, again, back in our test account, what we're gonna wanna do from here is also make sure you add in your billing and payments so that you can actually run ads. If you don't add your credit card to the account, you won't actually be able to spend and run any ads. So just open this up. It's gonna open up a new window. And from here, you can actually go ahead and add in your payment method here. Now, if you're creating a new account, it might give you this option here where you have to modify or edit the missing permissions. So just click on this and then you should be able to just click on next here. And now you have financial editor access. And from here, you can go ahead and add in a business payment method. So just go through all those steps, you know, add in your credit card, go next, and there you go. Now, the last step is to actually go ahead and add in your ad account. So to do that, again, come to business assets, go add asset, go advertising, and then go add account. Now, in order, you also want to make sure that you have your pixel set up and some other things, which I'll get into in a moment here, but I have other videos on how to actually set up your pixel. So we'll get into that once we're in the ad account, but um, that is just something else that you want to keep in mind is that you do want to set up your pixel. So let's go ahead and click on ad account here, and then we'll see it. you have the same options. So we're going to go ahead and create a new ad account here, and we're just going to name this uh, ad scale one, All right? And then you can do your time zone. You can do your currency for us. I'm just going to go CAD actually, and then next. And then again, you can see your meta business account is then connected to your ad account. So you can just go again, I, I agree, continue, create ad account, awesome. And then again, if you haven't added in your payment method, it's gonna ask you to add in your payment info. And then from here, you can see in your business assets, you can see we now have our actual ad account here. And then you can see who has access to that. And then from here, we can actually navigate into the actual ad account by going uh, three tabs here and then clicking open in ads manager. So as you can see, we are now in the ad account. And so we've done pretty much all of the setup stuff and you've now made it to the place where we're gonna be actually creating our first ad campaign, ad set and ad. Now, if you are not familiar with how Facebook ads works, as you can see here on this actual ad level, we have three different levels essentially in the account. So we have campaigns, we have ad sets, and then we have ads, right? So essentially you can think of them like folders where campaigns are the first level inside of campaigns that we have ad sets. So once we create our campaign, we can see all the campaigns here. If we click into the campaign, we'll see the ad sets that are contained within that uh, actual campaign. And then on the ad set level, ad sets contain ads within them. So again, within our campaigns, we'll have ad sets and within our ad sets, we will have on the bottom level ads. So it's kind of like a pyramid structure and just for organizational purposes, where then you can separate your campaigns and your ad sets and your ads based on level, right? And each of them have a little bit of different functionality um, and in terms of setup. So let's go ahead now and create our first campaign and let's walk through how to actually set this up as far as your first campaign 
your first ad sets, how to do the targeting, how to set everything up, and then actually creating your first Facebook ad as well. So for this setup, I've actually just switched to our Jetstream account here so that we can have our Facebook page and Instagram account properly connected as well as our pixel. And you can see we do have a few campaigns that are already set up here. We can see we have Jetstream retargeting leads is the campaign name. Within this, we can see we have a actual ad set that's targeting and named website visitors 180. And then within this, we also have one ad, which you can see is called V1 Dynamic Creative. So that's a little bit about how that works. Again, it's kind of like a foldering where we have each of these contained within, right? So again, for this one, we have three different ad sets. And then within each of these ad sets, we have one ad unit there. We have another ad unit there. Then we have another ad unit there. So let's go ahead and create our first campaign now. So from this menu, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on this green create button and that's gonna open up this option of menus here, right? So what you're gonna see here is you have six different campaign objectives uh, and each of them are a little bit different and will get you different results. Now, the first one is awareness, right? And this one is essentially shown to ads who are most likely to remember them. That's essentially what Facebook says. Pretty much what that means is you're gonna get the maximum amount of reach and brand awareness. You're gonna get the most eyeballs on your ads. However, because Facebook has a lot of data related to customers, you know, it knows that the traffic it's essentially serving your ads to isn't likely to actually click on an ad. It's not like actually likely to purchase. And thus, you know, awareness campaigns are great if you have a lot of money to spend and you just want general eyeballs on your campaign. However, if you have an objective, if you are trying to get leads, if you are trying to get sales for your business, awareness is not the campaign that you're gonna to wanna to use, but that's just a little bit of background on this campaign. Next, we have traffic here. So this one is to send people to a destination. So if you're trying to get the maximum amount of people to actually click your ad and view the landing page, or you know potentially even uh, message you on WhatsApp or call your business, right? This is where you would wanna run a campaign for this. Traffic, we do run sometimes. However, it is not the best campaign in most cases. Most businesses, you're gonna to wanna to be optimizing for either leads or sales, right? So next we have engagement. So this is if you're wanting to get people to actually, you know, watch your video, to engage on your ad or post, you know, to comment, to like it, et cetera. Also, if you're trying to get messages on Instagram or WhatsApp, right? This is where essentially that comes in, right? It's, it's all about getting engagement on your ad. People that are most likely to engage with your ad, again, it's not a super ROI driven objective. So we don't use it a ton, but it can be good to get social proof on an existing ad or uh, an existing post that you have. Next, we have leads. This is one that you're probably gonna be running most often, if not a sales campaign, if you're an e-commerce one, right? Leads is essentially, you know, trying to get people to actually call you, right? To book in an appointment, if you have some type of local business, or it's gonna be people that actually submit a form for you to follow up for them on some type of B2B business solution, right? So this one is very ROI driven, has a very clear objective, and is the, again, one of the most uh, popular objectives that you're gonna to wanna to use based on your business. So just go through here. If that is the objective that you want, if that's the reason that you're running Facebook ads is to get leads, either phone calls or form inputs on your website, you're gonna to wanna to select leads as the campaign objective. Now, also, if you have an app, this one is obviously the best if you have some type of app uh, on the app store, right? App installs is pretty obvious. So that's gonna be the objective for you if you do have an app. And then lastly, we have a sales campaign. So if you have some type of e-commerce store, if you make any online transactions and that's what you're optimizing for, you're going to want to select a sales campaign for pretty much all of your campaigns. I wouldn't waste time or budget on any of the other campaign objectives. Just start right away with a sales campaign. So in this case, for our business, Jetstream Digital, I'm gonna actually set up a leads campaign here. And you can see this is good for instant forms, for messages, for conversions, and for calls. And conversions can be kind of whatever you want, but this would be you know people submitting their contact information, completing a registration form, submitting an application, or taking another option on your website or app. So I'm gonna go ahead and select leads. What you can do here as well is actually name the campaign. So this would be whatever, you know, the overall objective of the campaign is, right? So say this is, you know, you're trying to generate, you know, cold leads, right? Uh, and you only have one of these campaigns, right? What you could do is just like something like prospecting. Say you're targeting Canada, right? So you go like Canada, and then some type of identifier for your business or who created it. So I'm just gonna go uh, JS Blake, right? So that you know, I created this campaign. It is prospecting, it is targeting Canada, and it is for, let's go uh, Jetstream Digital. All right, so that's the campaign name, a little bit long, but uh, that's an example of a campaign name that you could have. 
Okay, next, once you click on continue, it's gonna bring you to this next page here where you have a couple of different things. So you have their special ad categories. So if your business has anything related to credit, employment or housing, or ads about social issues, uh, elections or politics, this is where you are required to actually select that category. And this essentially limits your targeting options because if you fall in with these categories, they don't want you to you know, target people selectively um, just for these particular categories. So um, you're gonna wanna just note that if you do fall under those any, any of those categories. Um, what you can do here is you can also see the campaign details, so the auction type, right? You can go auction here. You only have the one option, so I'm, you know, I'm not sure why they give you the option in that case, but you also have your campaign objective here. Again, once you publish this campaign, this will be locked in, but that this is where we just selected that. And then we can also see, if we scroll down here, we do have our A-B tests here, and then we have our advantage campaign budget. So I never really use this A-B test function in general to A-B test. I would just create multiple campaigns or create multiple ad sets or ads in order to do your A-B testing, I wouldn't use their actual native function to do A-B tests. Um, I don't think it's as beneficial or set up uh, you know, as optimally as you know, just doing the test yourself. Um, also, you have your campaign budget, um, advanced campaign budget. Essentially, what this does is it consolidates the budget for your um, entire campaign at the campaign level instead of at the ad set level. Right, and so say you have five ad sets in your one campaign and you have $20 per ad set, that would mean each of those ad sets would get $20 per day. However, in this case, instead of doing that, you could set the budget to $100 a day and you could have five ad sets and then you know, Facebook would essentially spend that $100 across those five ad sets in the way that's going to get you the most optimal results possible. So depending on your business, depending on how you wanna set this up, I would definitely recommend using Advantage Campaign Budget. I think it's quite useful unless you wanna get more granular with your split testing. So I would say turn this on and set this budget to a daily budget of whatever you want it to be, whatever you're comfortable spending. And you could just take a monthly and divide that by 30 and just kinda of get a daily range for budget that you wanna spend. And again, or you have the alternate option of setting a lifetime budget. So say you wanna actually just spend $2,000 over the course of you know, the next month, you could set a lifetime budget for this campaign to be you know, $2,000 where the end date is you know, in 30 days, in which case it will spend those $2,000 over those 30 days for you. So most of the time though, we run a daily budget. And so I'm gonna set that here. Next we have campaign bid strategy. So we just always optimize for a highest volume. I would recommend you to do that as well. Um, once you get some more data back related to potentially a cost per conversion, a cost per lead, maybe a cost per sale or something along those lines, you can actually start to add these in later on. However, when starting out, you're not really gonna know what you can expect as far as a cost per lead and a cost per conversion in general. So I would just leave this as the highest volume. So get the most results for your budget. It's gonna let you actually spend your entire budget budget and not limit it. And you can start to get some feedback related to what you can expect as far as a cost per conversion. And then once you know that, I would use this as a tool to help you increase budget if you're wanting to spend more and keep it within the same you know, relative cost per uh, conversion range. Now you do have some other options that you as well. You can do a bid cap. Um, that's quite high, uh, you know, quite advanced. And so I wouldn't recommend, you know, even experimenting with that at all. In general, just leaving it on highest volume is what we do 95% of the time. So, you know, just leave that on highest volume. That's totally fine. As far as other options here, run ads all the time. You do want to leave that. Uh, we don't even have the option to edit that in this case. So just leave that. And then what we can do there is click on next and we're going to drop down at, after the campaign level to the ad set level. And this is where we're gonna do all of our targeting and actual setup for what we wanna optimize for. All right, so just move myself over to the left here. What we can see now is we have the ad set name. So again, you can just name this. Um, typically I name this after the fact, after I've created the actual ad set and targeting. So that's what I'll do later on here. Um, but we can see, first of all, the first option, because we are optimizing for leads, is it wants us to uh, essentially tell Facebook what is the conversion event. Where are we wanting to get these leads and how are we wanting to attribute them? So first of all, what we're mostly gonna be doing is typically gonna be websites. So you wanna generate leads through your website. What you can also do though is an instant form, which is essentially Facebook has its own lead form on Facebook. So they have they don't even have to leave you know Facebook platform at all. They can just enter their lead information on Facebook and that's what an instant form would be. 
So that's another option that's quite good um, as far as leads go. And then you also have Messenger, so people can generate leads by starting a Messenger conversation with you. You can also have Instant Forms and Messenger. You can also have Instagram, you know, uh, DMs and things like that. And then you can also have calls, so people uh, asking to call your business. In general, right, what you're probably gonna wanna select is website here. And then when you do select website, you're gonna see you have the option to have a performance goal. So again, maximize number of conversions. This is what I would select as well. You do have some other goals, like you can maximize the number of link clicks, daily reach or impressions or landing page views, but I wouldn't optimize for anything other than what you want. At the end of the day, it's all about telling Facebook what you want. And if you want leads, if you want sales, right? If, you know, if that's the end goal, right? Optimize for that in all of your campaigns. I wouldn't optimize for anything else. Otherwise it's going to give you a lot of impressions. It's going to give you a lot of link clicks, but they're not going to convert at the end of the day. So once you have that selected, what we're going to also do here is select our pixel. Now, again, I do have an entire video set up for how to create your pixel based on your website, but typically you're going to be using some type of website platform like Squarespace or Shopify or whatever it would be. And so they have a really easy integration with creating your Facebook pixel. And so you can do that again in the business suite, create your pixel, and then there should be a pretty easy step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to actually add that pixel to your website so that you can track your website visits and your conversions on your website. So uh, again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have that step set up at this point, and you can find my other videos on that for how to go ahead and set that up. So I'm gonna select our Jetstream pixel right here, and from here, what we're going to also need to do is have our conversion events. Now, if you do have a Shopify store or something e-commerce related, it typically will import automatically all the conversion events that you have. However, if you have a website that's more custom coded or you have other events for leads and things like that that you want to optimize for, you might have to create some custom events here. As you can see, I do have some stuff related to like booking in a meeting here. I have some stuff related to view content, some stuff related to leads. Um, so... In general, in your case, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and create and select that event that you wanna optimize for on your website. So if you are optimizing for generating leads on your website and you have a lead conversion there, you're gonna to wanna to select that. Um, and if you don't have any events fired for that in the last little bit, that's totally fine. You can still select that and it'll work just fine. Now next, you can also see here, you do have the option to have a cost per result. Um, but in, you know, this isn't gonna give you the option here just because we haven't really spent anything yet. And so, and as you can see here, it says the highest volume bid strategy doesn't have a cost per result goal. And so, you know, if you get some more data back related to how much it should cost per conversion, then you can start to mess around with setting like a cost per result goal. But since you don't know typically what your cost per result should be yet, uh, you can just leave that again as maximize the conversions there. Now, next you have some other options here. So if you're not familiar with attribution settings and what that really means, this is essentially saying how how Facebook takes credit for an advertising's result, right? And so attribution settings, it says seven, day, uh, seven days after clicking or one day after viewing, which what that essentially means is if somebody clicks on one of your Facebook ads, if they convert from any medium after seven days of clicking your ad and Facebook can see it is the same person, Facebook will consider that a lead. So say they clicked on your ad six days ago, then they come back from Google and actually convert. Facebook will count that as an actual conversion event because they clicked within the last seven days or if somebody viewed an ad, so they didn't even need to click it, but they seen an ad in the last one day or 24 hours, and then they ended up converting as a lead or purchasing or just firing for your conversion event, Facebook will also count that as a conversion for Facebook. And so you can actually play around with this. There's a couple different options. There's only one day click, there's seven day click, there's one day click or view, and there's seven day click or one day view. We typically just leave it at seven day click or one day view. I would recommend you doing that as well. This gives you the most data, so in general, just leaving that is totally fine, but I did wanna give you a little bit of background related to what that is. Next is when you get charged. Again, just impressions, you're gonna to wanna to leave that. Moving on here, we do have dynamic creative. So what dynamic creative is, is this essentially enables settings at the ad level where you can go ahead and create one ad and just throw all of your creatives into one singular ad and Facebook will just customize, play around with all of those assets that you give it to find the best winning combination. So. Uh, I would recommend this in some cases, and it does you know, enable you to create an ad quite easily. And so as far as simplicity goes for beginner's guide, this is what I'd recommend um, just turning on because it makes things a lot easier. Um, it's a lot less of a headache to manage, and you can really you know, upload you know, a couple good creatives, a couple of good um, you know, text headlines and images, and just see how it performs. Uh, and then you can always just launch another uh, ad 
uh, dynamic creative and just you know, add some different assets, some new assets and see how that performs. And it's a good way to, you know, get a lot of tests out there, let Facebook optimize, giving it the most data possible without trying to create, you know, a million different ads and getting overly complex with it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and enable this and you can see how to use dynamic ad creatives. Again, providing creative elements, it'll crop it, it'll do some stuff. You're all good to go there. So again, we've enabled that. Next, you have the budget and schedule. So you have your start date here, and then you can also set an end date if you do plan on having an end date. We typically just leave it so that there is no end date. And then for start date, what you can actually do is say you want to start it the next day uh, because there is an approval process um, that sometimes takes some time. So what you can actually do is just set that to the next day at you know 12 a.m. That's kind of standard process. You don't need to do this though. You can definitely just leave it at you know the time of your creation and that's totally fine as well. So one more thing here, you do have the option here to add a ad set spending limit. Uh, again, in most cases, I wouldn't recommend you to do this, but you can definitely do this to add in a minimum for this ad set to spend and then a daily maximum for it to spend. If you are using the advanced campaign budgets here, then you can actually start to go into here and say, well, I want this one to spend at least $10 and I want this one to you know, spend no more than $50, right? To kind of control that a little bit more if you're wanting to do some tests um, on that level. In general though, I would just recommend you don't need to turn this on, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. All right, so next we have the audience section. This is a super important section and probably the most useful part of the ad set and why you know I haven't named it yet because I typically do the name of the ad set related to what we're actually targeting, right? And so there's a lot of different uh, customizations that you can make and granularity that you can have with your audience targeting here. And so I'll show you a couple different options here. Um, first of all, let's start with custom audiences. So custom audiences are things like um, your existing data that you might already have. Right. And so in order to create a custom audience, what you would do in this case is actually just exit out of this and then click on this. And then you'd want to go here to audiences and you can actually just open this in a new tab. And so I'll show you an example of some of the custom audiences that we have. We don't have a ton here, but you can see you can create a custom audience for people that have visited your website. And this requires you to have your pixel connected. You can create a custom audience for people that have engaged with your Instagram account or follow your Instagram account. You can create an audience for your Facebook page, et cetera. So I'll show you here some custom audiences and the options that you have. So again, your website here. So once you have your pixel connected to your website, you can go to custom audiences here, click on website, go next, and then you can actually add data in from your pixel. So you can see we have our Jetstream pixel here. We have all website visitors. You can do people who visit a specific web page. If you just want to create a custom audience for people who visit that web page, you can do visitors by time spent. So like a, you know the top 25% of people that visit your website in the last 30 days. You can also do people that have done a page view or any other events that you have. You can even do a, a custom conversion for people that have actually converted as a lead and you can exclude those people from your campaigns so that you only show to new people, right? That's a little bit more advanced, but that's one of the options that you could have there. So some more options that you have for custom audiences. Again, uh, you do have the website, so I'd recommend creating some of those. You also have your Instagram account, so you can just go ahead and select your Instagram account here. And then what you're able to do is actually select, again, everyone who engaged with this professional account in the last 365 days. You can do people who started following this account. You can do people who visited this account. You can do people who engaged with an ad or post from your Instagram account. A lot of different options here, and you can set different time ranges for that. I think the maximum that you can do, though, is 365. So I typically just add that in as a good remarketing audience to use. Another custom audience that you have is actually your Facebook page. So again, very similar to what we did for the Instagram account. You have the same options there to get all the data in from your Facebook page if you have a lot of people that engage with your Facebook page there. And then you can also do a customer list too. So from here, you can actually go ahead and import from MailChimp or you can actually just upload a CSV file that has you know your entire email list for your existing customers. And this is a great way as well to get a custom list, a custom group of audience if you have a lot of data related to your customers into the actual Facebook ad account here. Okay, so those are custom audiences. Now we also have lookalike audiences. So if you're not familiar with what lookalike audiences are, it essentially takes your custom audiences and then it creates a much larger audience based on people that look like those people within your custom audience. So, and a good example of this is you can actually take a, uh, create a lookalike audiences of your past purchasers or your past leads and then you can create a lookalike audience of people that are very similar in terms of interests and different demographics uh, related to your audience to create a much larger list to target with your uh, advertising 
to get more leads or more purchases. So an example of what this looks like, I actually just added in our Jetstream pixel here, and you can see that the, the main event that it wants you to add is for purchases. So if you are an e-commerce brand and you do have a pixel connected and you get a lot of purchases, um, you will actually have the option here to add in purchases as the uh, event here. And then you can select your region. So say you wanted to do the United States, right? You can create a lookalike audience for people in the United States that have purchased your product um, and you can actually create a 1%, a 2%, and what each of these will do is essentially increase the audience size uh, by a little bit more, um, expanding this to people that are in the top 1% of people that look like that audience, the top 2%, all the way up to 10%. And you can see there's 27 million people once we get into the top 10% of people that look like a certain audience. Uh, you can also have some other events too. So you, you can do add to cart lookalikes, you know, um, initiate checkout lookalikes, lead lookalikes, search lookalikes, et cetera. So that's a bit about custom audiences and lookalike audiences. And again, you can create that by going to the all tools here and then audiences. So let's go back to our actual ad. What we'll do here is just again, click on our campaign here. And then at the ad set level, we can click on edit our ad and that'll bring us right back to where we were and we can scroll down and then we can see Again, we are back to here. So that those are custom audiences. I'm not actually gonna add in any custom audiences here, but a good place to get started is actually creating an ad set that's more remarketing based. So you can actually show people to that have visited your website that have engaged with your Instagram or your Facebook page in the last 180 days or 365 days is a good place to start. So um, with that as well, next thing you can do is actually add in your location. So you have a couple different options for what to do here. Obviously you can add in different countries, right? So Canada, in this case, you can actually add in, you know, more specifically. So if you wanted to do a city, right? So you want to target Winnipeg, like in my case, you can actually target this and you can narrow this down further. So we can say, actually, so let's just do a 10 mile radius around Winnipeg, right? We can just target that, or you can even get more granular than that. And you can actually do a pin drop. So for example, if you know that you just want to target like really specifically right here, you know, St. Vitale area, right? What you can actually do is just drop a pin right here. And then you can see, we can actually narrow this down further, right? Let's go to like five, seven kilometers by this pin drop or seven miles. Let's go three. And then we can see, we can get a lot more granular with that in order to better target our audience. Now, what you can also do, again, you can just go to countries here. You can see all the different countries. Um, you can also go regions. So if you want to target a much larger area, you can see the regions there. You can also go save locations and you can actually create a location um, that you can continually use. Now, what you can also try to do as well is if you have a specific address for your business, say you're like one, two, three, uh, you know, Pacific, right? You can, you can do like a, a zip code or something along those lines, right? Uh, in order to actually add in your address. So let's go, uh, you know, let's let's go like this one, two, three Pacific Coast Highway, right? We can actually go ahead and add that in. We can zoom out and we can see here, right? We've added that in all the way over here and we can see we're targeting this very specific location, right? And so uh, if you have a local business and you wanna target something very specifically like that, you can go ahead and either use the pin drop method or actually search for your address of your location and you might be able to find it there and add that in and you can go ahead and target that region. And again, just narrow that down a little bit further. So I'm just gonna go back to just targeting like the United States. Boom, so now I'm targeting all of the United States here. And now what we can do here is go down and uh, the next demographics that we can target here are age and gender. So if you know, you know, relatively what age, you know, the, the consumers that you're wanting to target are, you can definitely add that in, you know, say, you know, they're 25 to, you know, 50, you can definitely add that in, however, uh, I would still recommend trying to go a bit broader than potentially what you think your audience falls into because you never know. And typically you're gonna find it performs better if you give Facebook a little bit more room to work with. And so you do have that option there to uh, change your age demographics. You can also change the gender. So again, if you're only wanting to advertise to women, you can definitely do that. If you're wanting to advertise to men, you can do that as well. Now, now we're gonna get into the detail targeting. This is where you have virtually um, unlimited options as far as who you can actually target and what their interests are and behavior. And so what you can actually do here is you can go browse and then you can see the different categories. So first of all, you have demographics. So you can see if you open this up here for demographics, you have educational, right? And you can see education level and you can see, you know, there's a lot of different options here. If that's something relevant for your business, you have fields of study here and you can actually do a search term here, like, you know, marketing, that's not really a great one, but you can do theoretical physics or chemical physics or 
optical physics or physics teacher, right? So lots of different options there. Um, and there's, you know, virtually like so many different things like this. You can do schools, you can do undergrad years, you can do financials, right? So what their income level looks like in just the US though. Um, you can do life events, right? For example, anniversaries, away from family, away from hometown, birthdays, a new job, a new relationship, right? Newly engaged, etc. So lots of cool stuff there as well. What you can also do is look at, you know, parents. So if they are a parent, right? You can do all parents. You can do parents of certain ages, right? So again, very, very useful for that. You can also do relationships. So what their relationship status is, if it's complicated or divorced, uh, again, tons of different options there related to demographics. And you can also look at work as well, employers, what industry they work in, and then even job titles as well. Now, that's demographics. Next thing you have is interests. So this would be, uh, again, there's a million different things here. And what I'd recommend for interest is actually to just do a search of competitors or something along those lines to try to find different interests. But there is so many different things here. You have business and, and industry, entertainment, family and relationships, fitness, food, hobbies, shopping, sports, technology, lots of different things here. And you can break each of these down. You can kind of just explore each of these a little bit further. So uh, again, there's a lot of different options here. So you can go through each of these and, you know, do your research here and see, you know, which one is relevant for your audience and what they should be interested in, in general. Um, but yeah, lots of different options here. And then lastly, you do have your behavior as well. So uh, for behaviors, you can have anniversaries. Again, you can have mobile device users. You can have, you know, purchasing behaviors. So purchase with offer, right? Purchase with offer. You can do consumer classifications. You can do digital activities. So a new active business right in the last 12 months or 24 months you can do you know lots of different things here again lots of options in general to narrow your audience down and test and target some different things right however with that being said what i'd recommend is again if you have your conversion event set up and you have a general idea for who your audience is you might not even want to set up some initial detail targeting right out of the gates you might just want to let facebook go a bit broader with it because the more narrow you go the le the more expensive it actually costs to reach that audience and typically you know the the less room facebook has to further optimize so if you give facebook more you know room for within the audience to actually test go out there and see you know who's actually going to convert for your actual conversion event that's where you're going to get the best results typically so i'd recommend just starting out with like one you know or a group of of different uh, audiences here to start out with so for example for our industry you know we're doing advertising and marketing services so we might want to target people related to um you know marketing all right so we can actually just search for marketing so you can see marketing business and finance or you know, maybe we wanna do digital marketing, right? And then we'll, when we add in one interest here, what we can actually do is click on suggestions and then we can see a whole host of different other things related to that, that we might also want to target. So this gives us kind of an unlimited library of things to target and test. Uh, and so that's what I'd recommend doing is just searching for something related to your business, right? A keyword or whatever it be, and then going suggest and looking at all of the different options that it gives you. So from here, we can see we can do online advertising as well. Maybe we want to do small business owners and maybe we want to do advertising and, you know, agency. Awesome. So once we've added in some detailed targeting there, we can actually define that further. So we have a couple different options here. So we can actually click on define further and we can add in people that are small business owners or have any of these general interests or behaviors. And then we can ask, actually say, well, and they also must, you know, match something specific. So for example, they, they want to be interested in this, but they also, you know, must, um, as far as work goes, must have the job title of CEO, for example, right? Owner and CEO, right? So we can add in a couple of these here because there'll be some, a couple of different, uh, options here. So I'll add all of those in there and you can see now we've narrowed that down further to be, you know, they have these different interests and they also have the job title CEO and there's about 226,000 people that fall into that. And so we can actually target this very specific audience and say, lastly, you know, we want to exclude something. So, we, you know, we want to target CEOs and founders of these types of things, but we don't want to target people that, you know, like uh, seafood, for example, Right. So, you know, for whatever reason, we just, you know, we found that people just don't like seafood when, you know, they're a CEO. It just doesn't work out as a lead for us. Right. Um, obviously, I'm just kind of joking there, but, you know, we can definitely narrow that down further. You can see we actually lost, you know, about 30,000 or 40,000 people in that audience by excluding that. Uh, and again, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't try to get super, super granular with this. I would keep your audience size if you can at least above 100,000. 
ideally more, you know, over half a million um, potentially. But again, depending on your industry, depending on your business, depending on where you're targeting, um, I just wouldn't narrow it down greatly uh, if you don't have to. Uh, and depending on the appeal of your product, you know, any any given person might, you know, fall into a conversion event for you. And so um, you, you wanna give Facebook the most breathing room to be able to test and optimize around those conversions. So that is the entire audience overview. Lastly, you have the languages. So you can target all languages or you can actually just add in English. Now in general, if you're gonna target like the US or Canada, you don't need to add in English. Um, it'll automatically just be people that speak English because that's the native language there. However, if you're targeting like additional countries that might not speak English, I would definitely go ahead and add in English. So you don't target people that aren't uh, native to speaking that language. Now, lastly here we have placements. So Facebook has a lot of different inventory essentially uh, for where you can advertise. Um, and so you can either do manual or advantage. So advantage is essentially just all placements. It's gonna optimize and crop your ad automatically to go for all placements, or you can select specifically what placements that you wanna do. In general, I would just recommend selecting advantage placements. It's a little bit easier. You're gonna get better results overall. And there's not a significant you know, difference here typically by going for manual, right? This is more advanced. There can be a benefit here for sure. But again, you can see here, if you go manual though, what types of placements you can have. So you have the feeds, Facebook feed, Instagram feed, uh, right column, all these different things. You have your stories as well. You have your Instagram videos, you have your search results, you have your messages and your apps and sites as well. And that's pretty much the inventory. So you can go ahead and you know deselect whatever you don't want to advertise on if you wanted to do manual. You can actually just advertise on Facebook, let's say if you wanted to just do that. Um, and that's an option as well for you. But I'm just gonna leave that on advantage. And then lastly here, you have brand safety. So you do have your inventory here, your inventory filter. So if you are you know not wanting to advertise on you know um, you know uh, depictions of sexually explicit content, excessive violence, hate speech, right? Um, then you'd want to just leave it on standard inventory. If you don't care and you want to reduce your CPM and like you don't mind if your ad shows on some of this stuff, then you can expand this actually to the full inventory. However, um, or maybe you're a bit more picky about where your ads are displayed and you want to make sure that it is, you know, content that's very family friendly. It's no, no sensitive content at all. There's no, you know, um, negative connotations around it. Then you can go limited inventory and that will just increase your cost. Um, to reach people a little bit more because there's a little bit less inventory for that, but you do have the option there. Uh, and then you can also um, select on brand safety here. You can do uh, any blocked list that you have. If you wanna create a blocked list, you can do um, some further stuff here. I never really touch any of this other stuff. So that's pretty much everything you need to know at the ad set level. And then again, for this, what I would do is name the ad based on what you're doing. So in this case, we're targeting the USA and we're targeting you know, uh, marketing uh, plus CEOs, let's call this audience, right? And we're gonna go 18 plus uh, men and women, right? So men and women, 18 plus marketing CEOs. And then we're gonna go uh, uh, auto or all placements. And that's a good naming convention where you can just easily see, you know, what you're targeting, what you've done in this particular ad set to give you a good idea you know, on a glimpse to see what you're doing, right? Okay, and now the final step here, we are at the ad level. Uh, and this is where we get to actually create, you know, the things that our users or customers are gonna be seeing. Uh, so again, you have the same option here where you can create your ad name. Uh, again, you can create this after you've created your ad to give it kind of a, a unique identifier. Or, you know, if you wanna just do, you know, something simple, you could do like unit, like, add unit one or something like that. Now, what you can actually do here is if uh, the first option you have is a partnership ad. So it allows you to run ads from the voice of your partners, including creators, brands, or other businesses. So they can have better performance to regular ads. So uh, this is a pretty cool option here where you can actually um, select this and say you have an influencer that you're working with and you wanna run an ad um, with them like on their account or something like that. Um, you can actually select this and then you can select an identity um, and actually just search for them here and you can actually run an ad, you know, and you can see how it looks right here. Um, sponsored, you know, this and this sponsored, right? And it's an ad. So it's like a combination of both of your brands. Um, so it's really a cool option there. So uh, if you are doing that, um, you do have the option for that, um, but you will need to enter a partnership ad code and also have the identity and have access to their actual um, page and Instagram account as well in order to run that ad. So there is a pretty cool option to do that. I'm just gonna turn that off here. Now the next step is to actually select the Facebook page and the Instagram account 
for the business that you're wanting to run this ad for. So you can see our Facebook page, Jetstream Digital is automatically connected here. And then we're gonna wanna select our Instagram account as well. And you can see we now have both connected here. So when we run an ad on Facebook and Instagram, both of our Facebook page will be shown and people can click on that link and visit our Facebook page. Same thing on Instagram. They will see our Instagram account that's being advertised and they can actually click on that and go ahead and visit our Instagram account. Okay, so scrolling down here, we can see we now have the ad setup section. So what we're gonna have to do first is our creative source. So we gotta choose how we wanna provide our creative media for our ad. So um, typically you're just gonna select the manual upload. So you're gonna upload an image or a video. If you do have a product catalog uploaded, say you have your Facebook uh, feed connected to your Shopify account and you have a product catalog, you can select catalog here. Um, in this case, we're not gonna have that option, but that is another option that you do have. Um, so manual upload, and then you can have your format here. So you can upload a single image or video, or you can upload a carousel, which would be like a scrollable thing of multiple images. Uh, in general, I would just recommend doing a single image or video carousels in general, we find don't perform quite as well and they're hard to execute uh, effectively as far as like conversions. So single image or video is best. And then you have this option as well for multi-advertiser ads. So if you go click on learn more for this, you can see your ad will essentially show next to other brands ads that are similar to yours um, and people you know that are already in a shopping mindset. So you can leave this on. Um, I typically you know turn this off, um, but it's not like a huge, huge, um, you know, uh, change to the actual results that you're gonna get. Um, but I'm just gonna turn this off in this case um, so that your ad can kind of stand alone and you know stand out a little bit more in general. I think it's better. Um, so we're gonna turn that off and then we're gonna scroll down here and then you can see we have our ad creatives. Now, remember we did enable the actual uh, dynamic ad creative. So what that means is we can actually upload multiple images and multiple videos here and then multiple primary text, multiple headlines and Facebook will actually create some variations of those ads to run across Facebook and Instagram. Instagram and ultimately find the best combination of those to get us the most conversions for our event here. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go select images here. And then what you can do is actually, you have your account images that you can see here. You can also upload any new stuff that you have. And then you can also uh, go to your business or your Instagram or your page, and you can grab content from there as well. So in this case, I'm gonna select a few different things for media here. I'm gonna select um, this ad, this ad, um, this, this other stuff isn't really any ads here, but you know, I'll select, uh, this, like we're hiring one and you know, this logo here. So go ahead and upload those. And then what we can also do here is select some videos. So I'm just going to upload this one video here, and then you can enable this here to see an ad preview. Now we don't have a destination link yet, and we don't have any primary text or headlines yet. So we're not going to, um, so it's not going to show us the preview yet. Same thing with the URL. So once we actually add all that stuff in there, then we can actually go ahead and scroll through each of these and see what the ad's going to look like in real time. So, um, what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and grab our website URL. So I'm just going to go Jetstream digital, and then I'm going to add this in here. Awesome, now you can see the ad is actually showing here. Next thing that we're gonna need to add is our primary text headlines and descriptions. So you can obviously write this yourself, um, but what we've actually been using just to kind of speed this up a little bit is just using ChatGPT to create some primary text and headlines for us a lot faster. So what I would do is actually just go here and say, uh, give, give me three variations of uh, primary text for Facebook ads for right our website and you can see it's going to give us some different options here now i would definitely like try to clean this up a little bit more you know make the prompts a bit better but this is totally fine for now so i'm just going to go ahead and grab this all right add that in as one primary text here all right grab this other variation here add that in and then add this last variation here now obviously these this copy isn't the most optimized ad copy ever um, it could definitely be a lot better i would space this out a little bit more like this so it kind of reads a bit easier, right? And I would just kind of go through and vet all of this ad copy, but this is just, again, a simple way to create your first ad. And I would recommend using ChatGPT to, to just speed up the ideation process a bit more as well. So again, we can see kind of what it starts to look like here. You can see when you see this ad, you know, scale your e-commerce sales here, free discovery call. You can read the description here and see what that's all about. And we have some different variations here that are gonna display. So it's essentially gonna take these different creatives that we have here and pair them with all of these different primary texts and test them all you know, on all of these different placements here to see how it's gonna perform, right? And you can see we have some different store units 
you know, they don't look the best, right? But it still does the job um, and it's still gonna be getting in front of people. So that's the main thing. Then we can also add in our headlines again. Uh, give me three Facebook ad headlines. Uh, make these less than 50 characters. Boom, so have some good ones here. Supercharge your business. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this in there. Then we have unleash online success. Sure, these aren't too bad. All right, now let's just go to like a call to action, like schedule a free discovery call. And then we can just do a, a description here. Um, all right, your e-commerce growth partner, for example, all right? So just do something simple like that. The description is very unimportant in my opinion. Um, it doesn't really show that much on a lot of inventory, um, but it, it is still there, it's still useful. So we have our, again, we have our creatives now, we have our primary text now, um, we have our headlines and we have our description and we also have our URL added here. And then now what we need is our display link. So again, you can see what's actually displaying here is jetstreamdigital.io. If you wanted to display something different like call, you know, dot jetstream digital .io, right? We could do that and you can kind of see what that looks like there. Um, so that's an option, right? So again, just kind of gives you the option to play around with that a little bit more. Um, if you wanted to use a display link, I'm just gonna turn that off because I just like having Jetstream Digital displaying. And then we can do our call to action here. So in our case, we're gonna do learn more, but you do have the option to go, you know, listen now, order now, shop now, if you're an e-commerce store, uh, buy tickets, book now. Um, apply now, etc. right? So maybe we wanna just do like apply now. And then we have our pixel connected here. So we can see we have our pixel ID here and our website events connected. And then what we can do here is if you're familiar with UTM tracking at all and like, you know, you use Google Analytics or an external software that you wanna track further, you can actually build a UTM parameter here and you can go, you know, adding in your campaign source here. So you could do like Facebook, Facebook ads, something like that. Then you go campaign medium, right? Like placement campaign name, campaign.name, uh, let's go add set.name and then you can go like add, add.name. This is typically what we'll do. We'll just add these UTMs in here. And so this will add in when you click on the actual website link, this will add in all this extra information so that we can better just track the URLs a little bit in the back end and everything like that. So that is pretty much the setup of your entire Facebook ad account. And then you can go ahead and preview your URL if you want and you can kind of see what that's gonna look like and making sure it is going to the correct landing page. And then you do have this uh, option here where it says optimize creative for each person. So you're, you're vary your ad creative and destination based on each person's likelihood to respond. I would recommend just leaving this on. Again, very beginner friendly. You're gonna typically see better results with that overall. So I just recommend you do that, you know, just to see better results. And from here, all we have to do now is just click on publish. And you can see publishing one of three ads. Boom. So now you can see the ads have now been published. So we have one campaign, one ad set, and one ad was published. We can exit out of this. And again, if we go back to the ad level, we can see we have this campaign turned on. If we want to turn that off, we could easily just turn this off, which I'm actually just going to do because I don't want to run this. Um, if we click inside of this campaign that we just created, we can see the ad set that we have. If we click inside of this ad set, we can then see the ad that we just created. Now, um, in order to say you wanted to create another ad set to test, you know, a different audience targeting, which I would recommend doing, you can easily do that by clicking on duplicate here. And then you can actually choose the number of copies that you want to create. And you can duplicate this within the existing campaign. I'd leave this on. This is essentially, um, changing your targeting, but leaving the ads as they are. So I'd leave that, uh, clicked and then you can duplicate it into the original campaign and an existing campaign or a new campaign. Um, in this case, we're just gonna duplicate this inside of the original campaign, and we're just gonna create one copy here, and we're gonna go duplicate. And then what you can see here is it creates the exact same um, ad, but what we can do here is actually just change this name, and then we can actually just change the targeting here, you know, as far as what we wanna, wanna do here. So maybe instead of targeting CEOs, maybe we just wanna target people that like Nike, you know, for whatever reason, right? So what we can do is just actually just change the name of that. We can exit all of this stuff out here, and then we can add in the targeting here, Nike. And then we can see here, interest in Nike Inc. footwear. Boom, so we can add that in. You can see now we have 77 million people that we're targeting here. But let's just say, you know, for example purposes, that's what we wanna do. And we actually just wanna leave the ad unit the same, or maybe we do wanna change the ad unit here to ad unit two. And we wanna, you know, test some different creatives here, 
you know, uh, just kind of switch everything up and just kind of see what the results are like on this, right? Um, so what we can do in that case is just, you know, uh, go ahead and switch out the creatives here. We can leave the same copy. I would recommend trying to control the variables that you're testing here, but we can just leave the same copy here. And then, you know, we can go ahead and uh, essentially just publish this ad as well. And then we'll have another variation of this as well. Boom, so there you go. Now we have two ad sets. We have that there's an ad in each of those ad sets. And this campaign is gonna be running at $100 a day. Now, the last thing to cover is once you have these campaigns running, say this is on, this is going to essentially get reviewed. As you can see, if I enable this, you can see this is scheduled and these ads are actually going to be processing and then they're going to be actually under review. So once they get approved, you're going to start to spend money. And then the biggest thing now is how do you you know analyze the results? How do you see if this is actually working, if it's converting? Um, and you know, go about optimizing your account essentially to get better results. This is where the column setup comes in. So by default, you're gonna be on this performance one, which gives you you know this data, but it's not like the best data. So I have another video actually going over the optimal column setup for conversions for e-commerce. Um, and it's also follows a similar suit for lead gen um, for whatever your business does. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure you customize those columns. Um, similar to something like this, where you can see, you know, how many uh, reach you have, how many impressions, how many link clicks, what the click through rate was, how many leads you generated, what the cost per click was, what the cost per lead was, so that you can better optimize around which ad sets are performing best and get the best results possible. But um, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully that was um, a very helpful tutorial for you step by step how to create your first Facebook ad. Um, let me know if you have any questions. So there you go. That is the entire step-by-step -step tutorial of how to go ahead and launch your first Facebook ad. So hopefully that was all pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and you were able to follow along with each of the steps. If you did have any questions as we made our way through that, definitely leave me a comment. I'll be getting back to each and every one of you. Happy to help you out there. Now, if you did like the video, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out. Also hit the notification bell um, as well uh, down below. Uh, again, helps me out, uh, a small YouTuber trying to grow. Uh, and make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Again, if you'd like to work with me and my team, you can find a link to apply to work with me in the description below. Encourage you to do that if you're wanting help to grow and scale with paid advertising. And with that, thank you so much again for watching the video. Make sure to share it if you enjoyed. And until the next one, peace.